parts and letters vertical line Peter Ackroyd's London Calling, Nittimes.com. Go back to home. Women's fashion men's fashion design travel food culture video. Parts and letters vertical line Peter Ackroyd's London Calling. Culture by Joe D. Rosen September 12, 2013, 9 o'clock a.m. Tung Walsh Peter Ackroyd at his desk in Bloomsbury, where he typically writes three books simultaneously. Up close and personal with Peter Ackroyd, England's insanely prolific, controversial and eccentric novelist and historian. Writers write because they have no choice, the cliché goes, but if you crunch the numbers, it's clear that certain writers have less choice than others. Peter Ackroyd the 63-year-old English novelist, biographer, historian and author of more than 50 books, is one of those for whom writing at some point turned the corner from avocation to compulsion, and then from compulsion to continuing Olympian feat. Ackroyd writes nearly all day, nearly every day. Each morning he takes a taxi from his London home, in Tony Knight's Ridge, to the office he maintains in Bloomsbury, where he typically divides his workday between three books. He begins by writing and doing research for a history book, turns to a biography sometime in the afternoon and finishes the day reclining on a bed in a room adjacent to his book-lined office, writing a novel, in longhand. It's just the way I work, Ackroyd says. It was a Saturday in early summer, and he was sitting in his office, a handsome, sun-flooded room with large windows that looked out over a genteel square. The walls held shelves, packed with history books scholarly monographs the structure of politics at the accession of George I. I. Sex before sex, figuring the act in early modern England and three ring binders full of photocopied articles from academic journals. On a shelf above a large desk, there was another pile, a staff of DVDs for one of Ackroyd's current works in progress, the biography of Alfred Hitchcock. I think there's resistance to the idea that you can be a good biographer and good historian and also a good novelist. Ackroyd says. You're either accused of being a dilettante or of overproducing. But I've been doing it nearly all of my working life. I suppose the routine was originally designed to inhibit boredom, and also to earn money. But now it's just become second nature. In Britain, Ackroyd's way of doing things has made him a literary star, with many of his books becoming bestsellers. His portfolio is crammed with rave reviews and prestigious awards. The hallmarks of his work are well-known, fluid poetic prose, vast erudition, a flair for eccentric historical connections and an abiding interest in England and Englishness, with a particular emphasis on literature and the history and my thoughts of London. The most Ackroydian thing about Ackroyd's writing, though, is the sheer amount of it. In the past decade alone, he has published some two dozen books. These include for novels, the prose retelling of the Canterbury Tales a magisterial biography of the Thames River, London Under, about the world beneath London's streets, the English Ghost, about the national obsession with spectres and spirits, a cultural history of Venice, the beautifully written series of history books for children, biographies of Chaucer, Shakespeare, Newton, J.M.W. Turner, Edgar Allan Poe and the Victorian literary Adball Wilkie Collins, and a handful of other books. If you add up the page totals of these works, you get, by some rough accounting, 6,492 pages, give or take a few hundred. By contrast, the modern library's complete works of Shakespeare comes in at 2,560. It's the kind of output you associate with a writer of romance novels, or an army of them, not an acclaimed literature. In the annals of Gravamania, Thackroyd's closest spiritual can may be Charles Dickens. The figure with whom he is some familiarity, his 1,195-page Dickens biography was published in 1990. The reader who develops an Ackroyd habit will find his book shelves sagging. Now, Ackroyd has undertaken the grandest project of his career, his doorstop of doorstops. He is at work on the third and fourth books of a six-volume History of England, which aims to tell the whole story of the Scepter Dial, from prehistory to the present. The first volume, Foundation, The History of England from its earliest beginnings to the Tudors, was published in the United States in 2012. Volume 2, Tudors, The History of England from Henry VIII to Elizabeth I is out in Britain and will be published here, by Street. Martin's Press, on October 8. In the British press, the History of England series has been hailed as monumental, the biggest non-fiction project of our times, drawing comparisons to the tomes of previous